right, welcome back to the next video in the series. In the last video, we set up the player's controls on this event sheet right here. We're actually going to be working in our layout and we are going to uh, learn a little bit about some tiles today. So let's go ahead and double click on the layout and let's scroll down to tile map. There's tiled background and tiled map. We're going to be using both of them, but right now we want tile map. We're going to insert that and we can click anywhere. I'm going to click up here somewhere. And then we get a, a default tile map here. We're going to go ahead and load an image from a file. This is going to be in the assets that you can download. I leave a link in the description below. So I'm going to go into the folder that I named tiles. And there is a folder called tile bricks. Let's go ahead and select that, open it. And this is what you should see. And if we uh, check the size, it's 128 by 128. And I'm going to go into my grid, configure the grid, and I'm going to make it 32 by 32. And the grid color, I'm going to change my grid color to white so that we can see it. And I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to turn the grid on. So you can see our grid here is 32 by 32 pixels. Each block that we're going to use, we're going to set it up to where we use 32 by 32 sized artwork, I guess you would call it. And we have our bricks, different types of bricks, and then we have two types of windows. So I'm going to leave that like it is for now, exit out of that, and then let's go ahead and rename this tile underscore bricks. And then I'm going to come over here to my object types. I'm going to right click, add a subfolder. I'm going to call this one tiles. Then I'm going to drag that into the tiles folder. All right, first we're going to add some, some more layers. So in your layers panel, wherever it happens to be, and this is something that I uh, failed to discuss when we first started, this is how I have my interface set up. You may not have your setup the same, doesn't matter, as long as you have these panels open. And really, you don't need, like the results you don't really need right now. Your Z order you probably don't really need right now, but I like to have those up because you never know when you're going to need them. But this is something I've played around with, and this is what works for me. I have my project panel on the far right, and then in the second row here I have my tile map panel, my layers panel and my Z order panel. So in the layers panel, I'm going to right click and add a layer to the top. And I'm going to call that player. And then I'm going to pick this layer and I'm going to rename it uh, collisions. And then I'm going to add another layer at the bottom and I'm going to call this one tile map underscore bricks because we're going to have more than one tile map on each level. So we're actually going to have a lot more layers than this too, but for right now this will do. Let's select our player and then come over here to the properties panel and change the layer to the player layer. And then up here in our meta, we can select all of these and change their layer at the same time, which they're actually already on collisions because that's the original layer we had. I just renamed it. So you want all your collision blocks on the collisions layer. Okay. And then select our tile map that we just imported. And let's change that to tile map bricks. I'm going to go ahead and lock the player layer and the collision layer so that no matter what we do, we can't move those because that's the tile map. So, so we can't move any of those. So I'm going to take our tile map here and I'm going to set the position to uh, 0, 0. And it actually is the size of our entire layout. That's what we want. So if yours isn't, drag it out to where it covers the, the whole layer. 
or the whole layout, I mean. And then let's uh, let's talk about what we have here. This is our tile map. I'm going to zoom in a little there. When we have the tile map object highlighted, it shows up in the properties and we can change its properties. And mine is already set up to a tile width of 32 and a height of 32, which is exactly what we want because all the artwork that I created for this game is like I said before, in 32 by 32 uh, pieces. So make sure your tile width and height are set at 32 and all your offsets and spacing are at zero. And we do want it visible. And I think that's really all we need to do to set the tile map up. So if we come back over to your tile map panel, we have our controls up here. And the arrow is what we would select if we want to try to get out of the tile map on the layout. Because if I have, say I have the, the pencil tool selected, if I click outside of the tile map, the tile map is still highlighted. But if I have the arrow selected, then I can deselect the tile map and you see it goes away in the panel because it's no longer selected. But the way we do that is we click on the tile map object inside the layout which we can't see it because there's nothing painted yet, but we know that it's here, so I'm just gonna click and it shows back up. And when you click on a tile map, all of its artwork is going to show up in the tile map panel. So to paint, we're gonna paint all of ours with either the, the pencil tool or the rectangle tool. So if we pick our pencil tool, we get to hover over each 32 by 32 section and it even shows us up in the uh, top left corner of each square what number of tile we're on 0 1 2 3 and so on so I'm going to select this first one and if we come over here and actually oh looks like I forgot to do something uh, I think I am painting on that la uh, that layer but we can't see it because Let's see. Okay, so our player layer is transparent. It's checked. Our collisions layer is not. So let's check that to make it transparent, and there it is. I'm going to go to our collisions layer. I'm going to unlock it, and then I'm going to come up here in our project panel, and I'm going to select the collision objects in the project panel. Each one of them, I'm going to change their opacity to I'm going to do mine at 40%. Change each one to 40% or however transparent you want it to be. And there we go. Okay. Now we can see through it. And I'm going to select our tile map and the eraser. Get rid of that. And now let's go back to our tile map layer and call up our tile map, select our pencil tool, get our brick, and now you can see if you click and just drag along, it paints. And I'm gonna turn the collisions layer off for a second so we can, and I'm also going to turn my show grid off as well. Okay, there we go. And if I zoom in, you can see that it just paints seamlessly because of the way that the tile map is set up. All right. So I'm turn my collisions back on so I know where I am. And with my tile map selected and the layer, I'm going to choose the draw rectangle tool. Once you select a tool, you have to select what you want to draw. And I want to draw this brick again. So with that highlighted, now I can draw out a rectangle of whatever I want. So I'm going to fill these in and then now I'm going to select the dark gray. This is going to be my background and I'm just going to start there, drag out the whole area and fill in where my background would be. Something like that. Maybe one more row. Okay. And with that still selected, I'm going to go back to this one and I'm gonna make a wall and do the same thing over here. So now 
we turn our collisions off, we can see, oh, I missed a spot. I'm gonna go ahead and fill that, whoops, nope, we want, ah, that's what we want. I have another one up here that I use for the jump through because a jump through is still a ledge because the player can still land on it. It's not like a, a hole where you're gonna fall through, but a jump through is still a ledge, but I want the player to be able to see that, that it's different than a solid ledge. So I have made this one. And this is just, I'll zoom in here. It's just the top part of this block and the bottom part of this block. So if we select that one, I'm gonna zoom back out. I'm going to paint that in there and then if we turn our collisions off we can see that's what it looks like and I want to fill this one in as well so I am going to just put some bricks here for the time being and I can actually use this one all right so that's what it looks like I just want to be able to know that there's something here to jump on because I am going to go over to my meta, and I should have done this earlier, but I didn't. So we're going to turn all of these off. Select each one of them and go to, into the properties panel and untick initially visible on each one of them so that they don't show up during runtime. Okay, this is one another one of the things I wanted to show you. So. Even though I have the collisions layer selected and I was messing with collisions, uh, a problem I have is the tile map object covers the entire area that we're working on. And if I click anywhere on there, it's going to select that object. So having its own layer, I can lock it so we don't have to worry about it when we're not working with it. So now I can click anywhere and I'm not clicking that tile map object. So I'm just going to raise these up a little so we have wall collisions. And then I'm going to run the game. And there we are. And now we have artwork to look at. Not bad. All right, coming along nicely. We don't have to stare at these uh, different colored, brightly colored uh, solid objects anymore. Okay, let's import another tile map that we are going to need. So let's double click on the layer, or the layout, and scroll down to tile map again. Let's insert, and we can insert that anywhere. Let's go load, and this time I want tile objects. Let's open that, and there are two items here. Again, using the 32 by 32 as a guide, we have a spike and a barrel. And I'm going to exit out of that. Let's rename this tile underscore uh, objects. Sounds good to me. And right away, it has been put on the collisions layer because that's what I had selected. So I'm going to first go to our layers panel. I'm going to right click. I'm going to add a layer. I'm going to call this tile map underscore objects. And I want this to appear on top of our bricks because I don't want our bricks covering it up. So I'm going to move that layer above tile map bricks. And then I am going to select our tile objects object or our tile map and change this layer to tile map objects. This is a bit of a tongue twister. I also slide that into the tiles folder and make sure we are set up. It looks like we are. The position is at zero, zero, it covers the whole layout. So I'm going to lock everything except for the tile map that we're working on, which is going to be objects. And uh, actually let's lock that and unlock bricks and then activate the tile map and I'm going to select the pencil and this uh, background brick and I'm going to get rid of all of that. So now it's just plain background. So Now I can lock that, unlock our objects tile map 
activate that. And now when you have a, an object that you want to paint on that takes up more than one 32 by 32 area, select our pencil tool, because we only want to draw one at a time, and then click and drag an area around what you want to paint. So now I have this barrel I can put anywhere I want. And I'm going to put him right there. And look, our collisions are already in place. <laughs> OK. And I'm just going to put another one uh, up here just for the moment. I'm going to just click away, and it will get rid of your previous selection. And we only need one square for the spike. So I am going to paint a couple spikes. And then now I'm going to show you something else. Up here in our controls, the tile map bricks will not need to use these the way I have it set up, but the objects will, well, the spikes will. And we have uh, the options to mirror, flip, or rotate our art. So if you notice on the spike and the barrel, I have uh, a shadow on the right side and highlight on the left side. So whenever I want the spikes to hang from the ceiling, I can just flip. And it flips it with the highlight still on the left and the shadow on the right. So if I undo that, it's back to how we painted it up here. If I rotate, you can see that it changes the side that the highlight and shadow are on because it's actually just rotating the sprite. We don't want that. Now, theoretically, you could rotate it twice to where it's upside down and then mirror it, and then it would be right. So we could uh, just paint a few spikes there. But I just want to show you that you can flip, mirror, and rotate. But be careful and make sure that the artwork still looks like it's supposed to. And then a good practice you want to get into is when you're done painting something that you have uh, mirrored, flipped, or rotated, hit this X and it resets all of this. So now my spike and my barrel are how they're supposed to be in appearance. Okay, hopefully this is pretty straightforward for you. Now, I, since I am done with these tile maps, I am going to lock them both so I don't accidentally move them. And whenever, throughout this project or any project, if you have tile maps, put them on their own layer and lock them when you are not using them. I can't tell you how many times I moved a tile map around and took me a second to figure out what was going on. It's not always an easy undo. So, anyways, let's put some uh, collisions here. I'm going to unlock my collisions layer first. Uh, highlight, control click, and drag out a copy. And then do the same thing for our wall. And now he can react to that barrel as well. And let's go ahead and just see what it looks like. I'm going to make this full screen. There we go. And we don't have anything set up for the spikes yet, so they're not going to hurt us. But we can bounce off of the barrels. We can jump on the barrels. We can jump around on ledges. And that would have killed us if we had that set up, but we don't. So that'll be later. All right. Looks like everything is working how it should be. And with that, I think I am going to end this video here. And in the next video, we are going to make a spring object and I am actually have one more video on uh, level design with our tile maps but before we get to that I want to make our springboard and set it up with uh, programming and everything and then we can come back to our tile maps and build a full level. Alright I will see you in the next video and don't forget to save.